Hey, secret friends, just letting you know that I had a mic issue for the first five minutes of the podcast. So if you can hang tight through those first five minutes, we fix it and the audio is much improved after that. So thank you for hanging with us and enjoy this really fun episode. Thank you and enjoy the co-op mode. Co-op mode, round 67. This is the official video game podcast of Secret Friends Unite. I'm your host, Todd Oxra. On my journey, as always, my faithful co-op companion, Mark the Canardian Caravan. How are you doing, bud? I'm good. I'm good. How are you? Very good. And we are also joined by someone who has been on Secret Friends Unite, who normally does video games, but we didn't really talk video games at all. And that is Carly Kelstrom aka Scarlet Stream. Welcome. Hi, thanks for having me back. I'm excited to be on this one, even though we totally cheated the last time and talked about Mass Effect, so. <laughs> yes, you Charlie actually got on me. Mass Effect you turned... conversation in oh, with Charlie? Yeah. No, no, Charlie was not on, so we kind of, I kind of cheated and talked video games, but we, we kept it clean, I would say. We were very good. Yeah. So, Especially because I didn't uh, know anything about Mass Effect at the time. <laughs> <laughs> no, and, and you're going to talk more about that. Um, but Carly, just tell everybody a little bit about yourself and what you do. Sure. Uh, so most of you know me as Scarlet. Um, I've been part of the Stadia community. That's where I kind of started making more of a name for myself since it first came out. Um, 20, what was that, November 2019? Wow, that's that's a long time ago. Shoot. Uh, I am the brand manager at Gaming Source Network, which is where some of you may know me from, where Stadia Source became GSN. Um, I do a lot of different things as well. I am working on getting my own show going, part of GSN, that's called Nintendo Show, because who doesn't like Nintendo? That's awesome. Show? Oh <laughs> the Nintendo Show shirt right there. Uh, nice like pun. That. I love it. Yeah. Um, I do... Uh, Wooden gamer accessories, so like headphone stands, controller stands, board games, all that good stuff. I'm working right now on a new product, the DM screen. So I'm really excited to start getting into uh, pen and paper type stuff, so tabletop things like that. Oh, cool. um, nice. And I do nerdy apparel, obviously, from the N- Nintendo Show shirt. Um, I'm a mom, I'm a wife, and yeah, that's me. Awesome. <laughs> Nintendo awesome. and puns. All the two thumbs way up. Back there. Absolutely. Well, they don't call me Polka Todd for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. Well, um, since nothing. Carly's been on uh, Secret Friends Night, she's already given her origin, but I figured we want everybody to get to know Carly a little bit better and get to know Mark a little better even along the way. So we're going to play a game of Rent by return i don't know i keep changing the order every time i come up with this game um but we'll, we'll start there so we're going to uh assign three games and each of our hosts have to assign them to that specific uh category and let's just put it this way renting does not mean you actually get to play the game and then return it it's essentially you started it you're done with it you're not even completing most of it it's just not for you is the best way to put it Rental is you play it once, you put it away. Buy it is, this game is with me forever, and I will return to it. So with that, we'll start off with a series of games that might be interesting to all of you. We're going to start with, ooh, this is a hard one, because I'm trying to find one that would really appeal to the hardcore crowd. So we're going to say Pokemon Omega Ruby? Is that one? I'm trying to remember what my son first first Pokemon game that he loved. Why specifically Ruby? I don't know. (laughs) Why specifically the second version of Ruby? I love the preparation that went into this, Todd. Well, I was trying to think of the the first game, my son, my Pokemon game, my son fell in love with it on the 3DS. I think it was Pokemon Omega, maybe Sapphire. Was that one of them? Um, I'm pretty sure it was Alpha Sapphire. Alpha Sapphire. Alpha Sapphire. Yeah. Okay, sure. Let's pick that one. Um, <laughs> <laughs> then we're going to pick um, <laughs> Zelda Breath of the Wild. Okay. okay. That one I know. That one I know. 
<laughs> um, and then the third will be Super Mario Galaxy. Interesting. Good choices. Okay. That's that's tough. That's some tough stuff. So, Carly, why don't you kick us off your choices? I really am excited because that Pokemon game obviously means a lot to me. <laughs> <laughs> obviously. Um, so for sure, this is, obvi- this is, this is going to be a no brainer. Um, I am buying and keeping forever, uh, breath of the wild. <laughs> like that's, that's not going anywhere. Um, I have watched my husband play skyward sword and I have read, like <laughs> I have read all of those right there, all of those Zelda books, if you guys can see them, nice. all of them. <laughs> read all of them but i never actually played myself until breath of the wild and it was perfect because it was everything that i loved about the zelda genre and well it essentially is its own genre of the zelda franchise mixed with everything i loved about open exploration because i love skyrim as well and so it was like a perfect blend of zelda with skyrim and it was more than i ever wanted so that one is 100 percent um buy keep love forever nonstop um rent would probably be galaxy um because i've played most of it we have we got like that three pack or whatever it was of like sunshine um 64 64 sunshine and galaxy yeah um so i was playing i was playing through galaxy which reminds me (laughs) that's another game that i need to get back to and finish oh my gosh i've had like no life for the last year (laughs) Um, and then return would have to be Sapphire, um, simply because Crystal is my true love. <laughs> um, and I have played, uh, I played the original Ruby because I traded all of my Pokemon cards for like all of the Game Boy Advance games. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I got a lot of the Game Boy Advance Pokemon games. <laughs> um, so I played through the original Ruby, uh, which was fantastic because that's where they started doing the showcasing stuff where you could get like ribbons Mm -hmm. um, for your Pokemon. And I loved it so much because it was something totally different. It's like, if I wanted to be a showman, I could be a showman. I didn't have to just be a trainer um, who was, you know, there to take down the elite four or whoever they were at that time. Um, which then spurred on a whole conversation. My husband and I worked on a blog website of what the next Pokemon game should be before Sword and Shield were announced. Hmm. Um, it's it's pretty great if I say so myself. <laughs> um, but yeah, those are my three. Orders. Awesome, awesome choices. Uh, I, I I like your your reasoning behind everything. Um, for me, I, I'm I'm thinking I'm gonna pick probably breath of the wild as my, my buy, my keep that I, I put like 200 hours into that game. I, I've gone back to it. Like just <laughs> it, it, like, that's my first playthrough. I've put more into it in, in returns. Like, yeah, that's, that's such Pretty a, sure such so, an amazing so game. Tori is like my second home. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. And, and there's just like, there, there's so much, who was I talking to? And I was like, did you find the, um, was it like the bowling alley or the, the, like the mini golf course? Yeah. Thing? Yeah. The, the pin, the bowling pins it, and all that. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, or the, the like the, the mini golf, the, the thing. Yeah. yeah. And, and they were just like, <laughs> what? And I was like, the game's been out for like four years. And they're like, I never stumbled. Like I've never years. seen that once. Yeah. See the right. Like no one, yeah. no one even knows. And it's, it. it's yeah. Like, uh, that game is just special. So that's, that's my buy. Um, the other two are tough. I like your reasoning that the, like there's so many Pokemon games, but like Mario Galaxy is so special too. I and and I have been replaying. I, I replayed that a tiny bit, and then I've been really replaying uh, Super Mario Sunshine using like the wireless Power A GameCube controller for Switch, and that's really changed my playthrough of Sunshine because I was not super impressed with that in like the All Star Collection, but it was because I was mostly playing it handheld. And I just find the switch button layout, maybe it's just like muscle memory of the GameCube days or something, but it just doesn't speak to me the same way. So like switching over to a GameCube controller, I'm like, yeah, 
I'm feeling sunshine, but uh, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, back to Galaxy. Um, man, I, I did like Galaxy Two. I think a little bit better. So that's a tough one. Uh, I think. Yeah, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna rent Galaxy, and I'm, <laughs> sadly, I'm gonna return Pokemon. Even though that is the, literally also the Pokemon game that I'm replaying right now, like that is on my 3ds that is the game that i'm playing uh but there's there's well, so, so many other still think about it because like pokemon f- hasn't really changed a whole lot yeah but there's a lot of excitement behind what they did with um let's go eevee and pikachu where you had pokemon in the overworld like for real for the first time mm-hmm. um which they brought a little bit of that into the um uh what is it? The wild zone, the wild area. Yeah. Yeah. Into sword um, and shield. In, yeah. In sword and shield, which was fantastic as well, but they still mm-hmm. don't do shinies in the overworld, which drives me nuts. <laughs> um, but now we've got Arceus coming out, mm-hmm. which looks like it's going to be totally different. Cause this is going to be a huge precursor game yeah. where we're not going to have like a lot of the amenities and the, the nice things like Pokemon storage or like advanced Pokeballs or mm-hmm. any of that stuff. And it looks like it's going to be even more of like overworld battling and more overworld catching, which is going to be even better. So like, I feel like we're finally getting to the point where Pokemon might do what breath of the wild and Odyssey Mario Odyssey did. Yeah. Which they reinvented those two franchises, but kept them, you know, still well-beloved. Like, yeah. I don't think anybody said anything bad about Odyssey or Breath of the Wild. <laughs> so, no. yeah. Except for me. There, there, Except yeah. For the, okay, fine. Yeah. <laughs> I was just going to say, Todd can say yeah. anything bad about any Nintendo. Uh, but I, I think, yeah, to your point, like, Pokemon's such, uh, pardon the, the slight pun, but such an evolutionary franchise that with each iteration, they change just enough to make it interesting and just enough that it, it doesn't fully reinvent the wheel, but they, they add those quality of life things. And I think there's enough in the franchise to keep me going. If I, if I never could play alpha Sapphire again, I'd be like, cool, whatever. I'll move on to this, 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 this or this. Um, so that's, I, kind of, that's kind of its downside yeah. though. Oh it yeah. Oh, absolutely. It's that reinvention of the wheel. Like mm-hmm. I'm, I'm a little tired of only being a trainer that I have to go battle the gyms that I can't focus on. Maybe I want to be a Pokemon breeder. Maybe I want to be a Pokemon showman. Well, Maybe, I've got a know. game for you. If you like photography, uh, yeah. other- <laughs> otherwise you're screwed. Um, <laughs> I was actually no, I don't, yeah. for, an inten- for an intent show. <laughs> um, but yeah. yeah. So like, but that's that's still considered a side game. It's not a core game. Odyssey and Breath of the Wild are core games. Yeah. Like Calamity, so um, uh, Hyrule Warriors or whatever it is, Hyrule Warriors isn't a core Zelda game. So it's kind of like, eh, whatever. Mm-hmm. It's fun, but it's still to the side. All None of the Pokemon core games have had that reinvention of the wheel, so to say. Yes, they've had little advancements, but they mm-hmm. need kind of a bunch of little ones at the same time not between each game yeah for sure yeah they need a little bit of balance like how you can have breath of the wild but you can have Link's awakening right it, it's yeah. it's serving uh essentially uh the audience that wants something that's a, a throwback but still has that that charm and the characters but allows the series to really change and evolve as well as because the people that have been playing pokemon since youth are now 30 years old. I mean, so, and they, and you know, quite honestly, people get more advanced tastes. They don't like, you know, the same, you know, watching like Dora the Explorer anymore, surprisingly, (laughs) because they've advanced. So yes, yes, exactly. Yes. Now they can watch the new Dora Explorer on Paramount Plus or whatever it's on. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. Todd, do do we even want to know what you'd pick for this or just, you'd just return oh, the mall love my picks. the store on fire? You're going to love my picks. So, um, <laughs> I am, uh, I am buying the Pokemon game because that's not important to me. It's important to my son. That's not fair. That's a cheap oh, okay. answer. Well, if I throw, okay, I'll throw that in the trash then. I won't do the sentimental. Oh, listen to Todd. He's got a heart. No, <laughs> I will go then the route of um, I will 
uh, keep Mario Galaxy just because I love what it did and the the mechanics it brought in and how it made every planetoid unique and special. I will rent Breath of the Wild because I will play it once, never go back because I'm glad I experienced it, but I really don't love the game. I just found it to be very much like a game where it took a lot of things from, finally got some influences uh, from like uh, broad open games like Assassin's Creed, different things like that. Mm-hmm. But once again, I think it suffered in storytelling. I, I didn't find the Divine Vs very interesting. I didn't find the, the rewards for Discovery interesting whatsoever, the Koroks, things like that. And when people talk about like the story, unless you were a vested Zelda fan, I don't think the, the story itself was that intriguing because the characters had little little uh, to no character development. They were just kind of there, uh, kind of uh, giving you a very uh, broad brush characters and also the lack of consistent uh, voice acting. Just it, it felt like made the world less alive because I don't, it just to me feels like it's something that they just need to get beyond and uh, get beyond that, that, that part but that but i think it's a rental because i think it's worth experiencing but um i'm not one of the person that thinks it's one of the best games ever i just think it's a good game um that really brought in a lot of new fans to open world rpg so i like that when the pokemon obviously it's a return because i've tried a couple pokemon games and i'm like nope not for me so that's it but i do love the pokemon rap okay perfect so tune yes. in to episode 68 in two weeks when I kick Todd off and Carly and I can talk about how great Breath of the Wild is. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, At least Absolutely. Minutes. There you go. I can't wait to hear it. Um, <laughs> um, but, uh, real quick, I have to ask because yes. Breath of the Wild continues to surprise people all the time with new things like, what? I didn't even know that was a thing. Mm-hmm. Mark, mm-hmm. have you found Terrytown? Oh, Yeah. Okay, good. I finished I all of Terry Town. Sure. I got super hooked okay. on that. I was like, I need Apparently to find the Terry. People still don't know about that because they because they don't finish out Link's house, right? Because they're like, why I never use the wait. Link's at, Link has a house. Yeah, Todd. it's actually his previous forms. It's it was his. I'm sorry, that game form. gives you nothing. It, you have to. I'd have to search the globe for any of this stuff because some people sound like there's a thing. I'm like, well, how do I find it? I don't know. Nobody in the game has told me anything. The game has so little hints. It's been- I, I, I struggle with the game because that game has Nintendo logic overall. I don't like it's, Nintendo logic. It's an Come on. It's exploration in, it's in Village. game. I know it's an uh, exploration game, but give me a map then to explore. <laughs> don't send me on say die. The it's map. not Oregon That's Trail. The whole, the whole, it, it's not no, Oregon no. Trail. It's not Oregon Trail. It's not Oregon Trail. And when I did explore, I'm like, oh, look, another mountain I climbed to and I find a Korok seed. That's not interesting. <laughs> the well, the rewards just weren't there. We don't want little leaf poops. I was just going to no. say, the, like a golden poop is not shrine. enough of a like, reward for you. I don't want another shrine. I'm like, I'm bored as hell again with another shrine. So yeah, to me, it wasn't for me. Yep, it wasn't for me. I don't have the patience for that. Sorry. I'm good with a 60 hour game, any not a 185 hour right. game. Any game Moving that on. gives me a giant we're, we're Groot start... with some golden poop. Yep. And perfect. Start a new yes. Show. yes. Yes. Oh, oh my God. God. Yes. Yeah, so people hate me now. Oh, well, that's perfectly <laughs> fine. But while you want to, and know how can you tell me, you know how you can tell people how you hate me? And that's by rating and subscribing on iTunes. Tell Mark how much you love him and give us a five star and tell much how much you hate me. And that's perfect. Um, and then on YouTube, subscribe so you can just add to the, the YouTube hate. So I love that. So so do those click things, folks, up, and we click please. Click that subscribe button. Hit that bell to be notified Slap. anytime they go live. There you go. Absolutely. <laughs> and now with YouTube, you can see the disgust on my face when I talk about Breath of the Wild. <laughs> <laughs> you can watch me face you, Todd. We're yeah. just confused no, exactly. and concerned. But we're going to shift now and I'm actually going to show some heart because uh, Carly, I think you'll get a kick out of this. So a good friend of mine, Sean Nihas has basically said, I want to give back to the community. He's got two gaming kids, a girl and a boy. And he said, I will donate a hundred dollars each for each Xbox design lab controller that you design that my son or my daughter chooses. So if you are a creator of that design of that controller, the, the creator gets $100 to the charity of their choice. So uh, just a little bit about the, the two kids. Um, the boy, he loves Captain America. The girl is a gaming. She loves gaming, and she's actually requested us to have more content with, uh, with a, a female focus on it. Um, she loves Minecraft, and she loves the colors uh, light blue and purple. 
So I that's the like hint you get. Already. Jeez. Perfect. Yeah. So Carly, yeah. uh, this is your request to put on your design hat because you are a designer by all means. So we want your design. Okay. I will try. I've, I've actually tried out the Xbox controller thing and I'm just, I make dumb stuff. <laughs> <laughs> we love it. We love it. So, so this goes out to the whole Very community. Um, and cast. please, uh, everyone, if you want to be involved in this design contest, um, you can uh, put this out on Twitter at Secret Friends U or at Tioxtra or at the underscore Canardian. Let us know your designs. We will be put those into the contest. We'll basically put all the designs on the website. And then uh, the kids will vote in a month, I believe, is we're going to do it. And then we'll announce the winners. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you can also drop them in the Discord chat. Uh, everything so far has been going on in the video game chat channel on our Discord. And it, it, it all kind of kicked off. I still haven't decided, by the way. Uh, but I dropped uh, somewhere around 20 designs that I've made up because I'm super indecisive. And I was like, which one do you guys like? And uh, luckily it was like a four-way tie for first. So that's helpful. <laughs> yes. Uh, Absolutely. Really, I'm, I'm circling. I'm circling a couple. I, I Anyway, but, uh, and then, and then people started like sharing designs and then Sean uh, shared one that he likes. And then um, his, his kids were kind of, going through and other people were jumping in and it's it's been a fun chat so so definitely join the discord server as well that's uh that's where a lot of this stuff's going down absolutely well excellent so now it's time for us to talk about what we've been playing uh so carly uh you're playing uh something we talked about in secret friends unite so tell us all about your experience with mass effect 2 sure uh well so i finished mass effect 1 obviously <laughs> And I loved it. It was fantastic. Um, I did everything. And I mean everything. Every side quest. Every planet that you could visit and collect ores and whatever from. Every, essentially, like, I beat up every gang. I did all of that. (laughs) Unfortunately, I did all of that before I ever went back to the... um, citadel i did everything and i never went back to the citadel once no which was a bad decision (laughs) because i got there and i got like this one quest where there's this guy so like i was i managed to do a few more things that were there at the citadel before i went and did like the main stuff and there's this guy though who was like um hey i'm kind of like a hobo or something can i have like 10 credits so i was like yeah sure he's like Thanks. I'm also like a friend of your mom. I was like, okay, but I've never heard of you. He's like, well, call your mom and tell her about me. So I was like, okay, I get to call my mom. I'm gonna go on my ship. I'm gonna call my mom. But the second I got back on my ship, I was on the run. So I failed that side mission. So it was the one side mission that I didn't get to do. (laughs) And my husband's like, it's okay. I didn't do it either. And I'm like, honey, you don't understand. I am a completionist. And knowing the things that I know about Mass Effect that things you do in game one can carry all the way into game three. I'm like, I could have helped this hobo. I could have like (laughs) been best friends with him and he would have had like the greatest life ever. But now I will never know. We've all been there, Carly. (sighs) We all wish we could help that hobo. Yeah. So I ended at like level 55 and like I maxed out my, um, uh, purse, my, my charm because I was like, okay, I can't like upgrade any of this in game two. So I have to be like boss. So I go into game two and they're like, yeah, you're boss, but now you're broke. <laughs> I had like 999,999,000 credits. My goodness. And like the best armor and the best weapons. I could kill things in like one shot. And I was like, boss. And then you start over and you're working for the bad guys. And I'm kind of angry. I've been angry at this game for almost a month now. I haven't gone back to it because I'm mad that I'm working for the bad guys. Mm. <laughs> Which I get they're not the bad guys, but they're totally bad because they like do terrible stuff in the first game. So I was like, okay, well, plus I need to like, there's a net. Um, plus I need to like finish a bunch of work. So I've been like cracking down on that. So I just haven't had time for <laughs> any video games. So you know Anywho. what you do when you find out you're secretly working for the bad guys? Mm-hmm. You beat the shit out of your 90 year old best friend and sink all the helicarriers. 
wait, wrong franchise. No, sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Deep what? cut there, Mark. Uh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I don't know what Uh-oh. any of that meant. Oh, that Cap- shield. That's a, that's a Captain America uh, Winter yeah. Soldier reference. Uh, that's right. Oh. Yeah. The, all, yeah. Yeah. Hail, uh, Hail, 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 Hail. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah. No. I, I well, you can that. just do what I did. You just wait three years because you had to wait between the sequels, right? Now just put yeah. it on pause for three years. Do it in yeah. real time. Yeah. So, anywho, so no. I've been working on that, and they've also like dramatically changed a lot of stuff. So I'm like, ah, crap. Now I have to get used to a new system, but I really like the old system. So anyway, Mass Effect 2, I do, I am really enjoying it though. Um, I've collected everybody but Jack, who I'm kind of refusing to collect her because I don't want her on my team at all. And oh no. I've been spoiled as to who the Shadow Broker is, which makes me even more upset. <laughs> um, so I'm just kind of mad at this game right now. So instead, in my 10 minutes of off time a day, I've been replaying Skyrim for the 30th time. Go figure. But this time as a wood elf, which is not usual for me. I'm usually a Khajiit or an Argonian. But this time I am a wood elf. And for some reason, I am kicking butt. (laughs) Really? Yeah. And I don't know why. Maybe it's because it's an elf and I have a thing for elves. But yeah, I'm replaying Skyrim. What or it could be that you played it 30 times. <laughs> or that. I'm just really good at, at headshots. Mm. I, that yeah. could be it. What what made you pick the wood elf, wood elf this time? Was it just like random like, you know, um, choice? Well, or I don't like high choice? elves because they're jerks. Right. And the dark elves, everybody's kind of like racist towards them, which I didn't want to be like an underdog because I was already an underdog enough when it came to being a Kaji because everybody's yeah. like, you're a thief. It's like, but I'm not. But I really am because I just stole this from you. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, so this is going to be kind of m- more nerdy. Uh, I have an elf Sona, essentially. Um, So like, if I were to ever cosplay, it would always be this character kind of thing. If you say um, cosplay so like, three times, Charlie shows up, by the way. So that's like twice. the candy man. Yeah. <laughs> Not in your house. He just he just appears as an image on your screen with a uh, selfie. For those listening, I just looked very concerned over my shoulder. Um, but yeah, so I was so I figured, well, I might as well actually play as an elf this time. Plus, I always I always archer like a hundred percent always. But what's funny is that as an elf, I should be an archer, but this time I'm using a mace and a shield. All right. So I can't explain it. I just figured I would do something different. And I have also seen that there have been people who've been replaying Skyrim by using character sheets that they've written beforehand. So they've written like new backgrounds, um, kind of like morals and principles that the character has. So like things that they would do or things they would never do. So I'm also trying to like go by that. Like if I were actually in this game, what would I do? So if I joined the Thieves Guild, I would obviously never join the Dark Brotherhood Because the thieves kind of have a thing where it's like, don't kill unless you have to. Whereas the Dark Brotherhood's like, kill everybody. So, we'll go with that. That's that's very similar to what people are doing with like uh, GTA V. Yeah. They're calling, they're basically like role playing within GTA V where they have a role and they don't vary from it. It's like, I am the guy that does this and that's what I'm doing in the game. I am the guy that details your car. Yeah, and so that's what I do. That, that immersion gets kind of lost in games like Skyrim or GTA or things like that because you're able to do everything without really having consequences. Mm-hmm. So, like, and in Fallout too, like, you could join almost every faction and nobody would give a rip. Um, so, forcing yourself to actually be immersed at that level where it does affect the things that you do actually makes it more fun because you've restricted yourself now in ways that the game doesn't restrict you. That's one of my hopes for Starfield is that it actually matters what you do, what faction you join. If you join the Raiders, people aren't going to like you. Mm. Sure. Yeah. You're like your choices would have, it's kind of like they'll remember you did that or it's kind of like a permanence of, or a, you know, like you said, you're you're a thief, but you're not really a thief, but you are, and it's kind of like sticking An to those characteristics. Kind of thing, exactly. Though. Yeah. 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 
and I know that they kind of did it in New Vegas, Fallout New Vegas, um, where like in, instead of just being, uh, I can't remember exactly what their terms were, but pulling from Mass Effect, besides being a paragon or renegade throughout the entire region, you were actually a paragon or a renegade per section. So then it mattered, like, if you were a paragon at this city, but a renegade at another city would actually matter. So you could you mm. could go walk around the city like nothing is wrong, but you go to the other city and everybody hates you. So, like, that was just a little bit further into that immersion, and so I want I want more of that. I want to actually be role-playing with my character. Anyway, that's what I've been playing. Put, put a little <laughs> role RP in the RPGs. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's not just stats and uh, like gear, right? Yeah, it's more yeah. than that. More than just open world gaming. I wanted to actually be role play mm-hmm. gaming. Makes sense. Yeah, I think the worst part and the worst thing that happened to me in Skyrim was when I turned into a vampire, or like I or got infected as a vampire. Yeah. Oh my god, that was so scary. And I'm like, oh my god, I don't want to be a vampire. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah. yeah. One of my tough. several stuff. playthroughs of Skyrim, I just, I went in a direction that I'd never gone in before off the start. And I found myself on this, like, I forget. It's like one of the islands, but you're not supposed to get there for a long time. And I somehow just got there and I just kept getting my ass kicked, but then I couldn't get back. And I was just like, <laughs> well, that's it for that playthrough. Let's start again. Yep. Uh, <laughs> yep. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Uh, that's good. Yeah. I love, I love that game, game though. though. Yeah, very so cool. Good. Yeah, very no matter cool. how many times you restart, you're like, "Now I'm done with this game. I'm done with this game." And it's like, a couple I've months go by, and you're like, oh, "I need that itch again. I got the yeah, Skyrim exactly. time." Oh, okay. My husband comes downstairs. He's like, "You and your Skyrim, like you just don't understand." <laughs> <laughs> I can quit anytime. Uh, That's yep. right. Anytime I want. Or can and I, I? I listen to Skyrim OST like all day long as well. So he's like, oh my gosh. <laughs> and then you play Skyrim on your Alexa. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I wish. I eat all the cheese. <laughs> That's right. That's it's the right. only reason I want an Alexa. <laughs> all right, Mark, you've been playing a couple of games as well. Yes. Yes, I have. Uh, so I played uh, Rain on Your Parade. That was a request uh, or a suggestion from uh, Brock McLaughlin, I believe, uh, on the show a couple of weeks ago. Uh, he mentioned that and it's it's on Game Pass. So I was like, you know what? Let's let's play some of that because I was looking for something new and just kind of I wanted more of a bite sized experience, even though this this game is a little longer than I anticipated. Uh, I'm, I'm very much enjoying it. It's got some really weird humor very simple gameplay to, to just be able to pick up and, and just rain on people's parades. And it, I'm going, going through a, a very completionist run. So if I don't get something perfectly the first time, I'm like, nope, nope, restart. I need to force everyone to get into the pool or I need to trap someone <laughs> in a dark room, even though those are like bonus missions or something like, you know, you can, you can complete the, the mission without, doing every single objective but um no i've been i've been trying to 100 percent this game and, and get everything and uh it's it's fun it's if you have game pass definitely check it out and even if you don't and it sounds it's it's very weird like almost donut county level of like dumb humor that i really really love so it's it's very enjoyable um it's very well, cute yeah yeah it really is uh, and, and you, so, to, so gameplay wise, you play as a cloud and the, the premise is that there's this adult telling a child a story. You never really see them. You just kind of see shadows in tiny little cutscenes. Uh, but you play as like a cloud. It's very cardboard cutout esque. You can actually draw your own face on. So I drew a face on for a while and then I switched to. Whoa, I almost knocked my microphone over. Uh, <laughs> wow. to, uh, that was a good catch. I'm so excited. Uh, I, I'm like <laughs> super, I'm talking with my hands. Anyone watching the video realizes now how much I talk with my hands. Um, and I'm going to try not to for the rest of them. I'm like, going to hold my chair. I just keep my hands below the screen. And <laughs> That's not going to work for me because, yeah, I'll be all fidgety <laughs> and stuff. Um, so you play as uh, a cloud and... Yeah, you can you can draw your own face on my and you get like accessories and stuff. So I kind of look like Drew Carey holding like a world's best cloud mug right now, which is just awesome. I've got like <laughs> some thick glasses and like it's just great. Um, 
Yeah. And you just, like I said, you just do little dumb little missions and you press A to rain and B is to do lightning and you get snow. And I think that one's why. Uh, and it's, yeah, it's just, it's so fun and dumb. I love it. Uh, another one I've been playing, the, the next game on my list, uh, Lego Marvel Super Heroes. Uh, playing that one again with my wife. Nice. She loves the Lego games. She just finished her 80th run through of Lego Harry Potter collection <laughs> and said, do you want to play Lego Marvel? And I bought, so there's the, the three pack that was on sale uh, on Xbox. I'm sure, I think it's on sale right now on, on PlayStation as well. Um, and that comes with Lego Marvel Superheroes. Lego Marvel Superheroes 2 and Lego Marvel Avengers, I believe. Uh, and it's like the ultimate collection of all three of them. Comes with all the DLC, all that kind of stuff. So we bought that. We're making our way through. We beat the story already. Now we're doing all like the 100% red bricks and all that kind of stuff. Um, once you get those brick multipliers, it's just ridiculous. So she she goes after the gold bricks now and my big focus is getting all the characters so we're we're slowly unlocking all the characters but um for the very rare for me to actually achievement hunt but i'm doing a bit of achievement hunting in this game because most of the achievements are so dumb and easy that, that i'm like well I might as well try for like as close to a thousand gamer score as I can. So if you have to smash 15 cars as the thing, it's like, well, I guess I'll run around New York as the thing for four minutes and <laughs> smash 15 cars. Like it's, it's that kind of stuff. But like, there are a few of them that are like, you have to collect every single character again, why I'm hunting all the characters down. And like, there's some like, yeah, really weird stuff. But like now that I kind of set myself down that path that I unlocked so many achievements so far, I'm kind of like, do I want a thousand achievement point? This thing is like, I don't do that ever. But uh, when I'm playing with her, she's like, she gets like super focused on a hundred percent completion. So I'm like, when in Rome, I guess we're going to hundred percent Lego Marvel and then move on to Lego Marvel too. So uh, it's going to be like a fun little bit. Uh, and I already mentioned I was, I was playing a tiny bit of Super Mario Galaxy and then uh, grabbed that uh, GameCube controller that I bought for Smash Brothers. And I was like cleaning up some stuff and I found that controller and I was like, you know what? Let's switch over to Sunshine. And I've been, I started a fresh new run of Sunshine and I'm really enjoying it. It's, uh, nice. it's still nice. a little janky. Like it's definitely... <laughs> I would say the least polished like Mario game, especially of the 3d ones, like they've been so good. And this one you can tell was kind of like, we need to get this out. Like we launched the system with Luigi's mansion and people are like, where's Mario. And we're like, I don't know, bro, not finished. But like <laughs> at some point someone would just like release this. Uh, if it was out now, <laughs> we'd be getting some patches. Cause I'll tell you it's, it's some janky stuff, but it's still very much enjoyable and uh, it's yeah. Like you can even see the, the foundations of some of the stuff in galaxy, especially where I played galaxy and then jumped into this. Like you can see stuff when, especially when they take the pack off of you or it's like some of the stages. Uh, what was one that I did like a couple of days ago? Like this, this is straight out of galaxy where you go and like, there's a giant sand bird and you have to like jump on like the individual little things and collect it. It's, it's yeah. Very galaxy X esque at times, but uh, it's, it's a neat little game in its own right. So if you have that 3d all-stars collection and you skip this one to play two better games, like, go back. But I also would like highly suggest getting a GameCube controller because even the on-screen prompts are still GameCube esque. So like you can really, I don't know for me, for how my brain is wired weirdly, like <laughs> seeing the X and Y buttons, especially because those buttons are a mess on every controller. Um, seeing like the shapes of them, of those little like weird gray beans, um, you can kind of be like, Oh yeah, that's the one on the side. Oh yeah. That's the one on the top. And you know, like it's, I don't know. And there's something so satisfying about that massive a button that, that had no reason being that large on a controller, but I love the GameCube <laughs> controller. It's, it's awesome. Um, yeah. So that's it's funny because, well, go ahead. 
Oh, I was just going to say, my favorite part about Sunshine is jetpacking to places I'm pretty sure I'm not supposed to be. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Definitely. I love doing that kind of crap in Skyrim and, like, ending up places where I'm pretty sure you're not supposed to go. And in Sunshine, it's just even better because the game's like, I don't know what I'm supposed to do to you right now. <laughs> Whereas, like, every other game's like, you can't be here, you need to turn around or you die. Whereas Sunshine's just like, you can't go that way. Hey, Hey, I said you can't go that way. <laughs> hey, will you come back, please? We warned you. Please? Okay. We warned you. Okay, bye. Yeah, it's great. Where Good luck. Go? <laughs> like, that's yeah. the game. <laughs> yeah. yeah, my favorite, the, the Skyrim butt scoot where you go backwards up an island or, or uh, up a mountain and you're not supposed to. I love that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's the worst traversal, but I love it. Uh, love it. Yeah. And, and I will tell you this. Uh, I never own an n64 so i really missed out on uh 64 i played it in like a best buy kiosk super mario sunshine was my first mario uh 3d mario and i love that game hmm. and i cannot play 64 at all i don't oh, have that muscle memory so for to me it's, it's just kind of practically unplayable because i feel like i don't have nostalgia i don't think it plays well at all comparatively they also it up. oh yeah yeah so, like, well it's just like the slidey those slidey levels i feel like I don't know how anybody does this. Like when you're with the penguin and those things, I'm like, it is virtually unplayable. I don't know how people love it. It's always frustrating. That's why we threw the baby penguin off the stage. (laughs) That's, that's well (laughs) worth it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, Trent, very Trent quickly. Two year old, how to play classic Mario? Because we get oh, this is like classic Mario on the NES through the Switch online or whatever. Yeah. And so she, so we're just like, okay, push the button to to jump, and then just move the stick this way. And so she does that. She just moves the stick one direction and presses A to jump. She's like, see, see. <laughs> nice. That's awesome. Got to yeah. start him early. Oh my goodness. Oh yeah. So I uh, have been playing some games, and one of those would be Blood Roots by Paper Cult Studios. It's on Game Pass now. Um, man, oh man, I love this game. It is like uh, it's it's like a Souls like, but the greatest thing about this game is the short levels, and it's fantastic. And this game is basically your essentially my uh, Mark. I think this guy is like from the Yukon. He's got like a, 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 a basically a dead bear on his head. And he's out killing people out in the, the Yukon. And the cool part about this game is everything is a weapon. And I mean everything. A carrot can kill a guy. Uh, a wagon. You can ride a wagon. It crashes into people. The wheels fall off. You can throw the wheels of the wagon, but they bounce off the walls. Uh, you can get a, 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 a like a... a, a I don't want to call it a spear with fish already on it. You can spear people. You can use swords as you slash. It also helps your traversal. So you can go across wide levels. It is so much fun. It's this awesome. game is fantastic. It has like these really weird bosses that you have to take on. And it is wonder. It's a wonderful game. It's highly addictive. It's challenging. Um, and But the levels are short. They're like maybe five minutes each. So you never feel like, I'm not going to get through this. No, you can get through it. It's just how you want to uh, go across it. And it's, it's always a blast. And they give you so many ways to take out enemies. It's cartoonish and I love it. It controls fantastically and it is cloud saved between PC and Xbox and clouds, uh, the cloud as well. So anywhere you play this game, your, your, your progress will be there. So I, that's my favorite thing about Xbox when it works. I hate it though. When there's two games on one's on PC and one's on Xbox. Nope. Your saves don't count. I'm like, get together xbox but when it works <laughs> it's great so i love it it's awesome, awesome. blood roots it's fantastic it's on game pass i think it's like 15 bucks on steam or on pc or xbox if you don't own that so definitely recommend it it's very cartoonish though like when you kill a boss they spurred a little blood but it's not like it's like it's like anime kind of violence in a way it's very cartoonish not very uh in your face but it's very cute uh I also played a lot of VR, and I just want to focus on one game on Oculus called Pistol Whip. This game is a hoot. I love it. They added a, um, uh, a like basically an adventure mode, but this game feels like James Bond tied with John Wick, where you're going through a level with a just jamming soundtrack, and you're going through it. And as basically you're allowed with 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 Oculus Quest, you can move anywhere, duck, dive move to the side as bolts are coming through at you and they stream at you. So you can kind of see their path and it's just so wonderful. And the, when the, when the soundtrack kicks in and you're, it's almost like a rhythm game, but you're killing people uh, and it's fantastic. And you just see them all around you up in the air to the side. And when you actually 
get them. It's like a ballet of just violence and sound. And it's so wonderful, but you will get a workout in, you get sweaty, you get steamy, but it is such a fun game. And, and I'm really have said, I want to get more into VR and this is the way I'm getting in there. I play dance central in VR Mark and my son took video of me. Oh, I will pay him to send me that. <laughs> Turn down for what? For me. That was the song I was Fantastic. doing. <laughs> okay. And it was awesome. I love it that 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 they made Dance Central from like all the way from, you know, uh, uh, what was it? Uh, Connect. And they brought it onto VR and it works perfectly. It's so much fun. So that's there too. But um, name lastly, price, though. Logan. Name a price. He hasn't shared it with me. So I don't know if it's real or not or if he's thinking he can blackmail. But I'm like, you know what? I look probably pretty cool. So share it and, sh- you know, <laughs> share my legend is all I'll say. So there we go. Uh, and lastly, I picked up Control uh, again. I beat the game, loved it. The DLC came out. I heard fantastic things about it. The frustrating thing about Control, I bought the Ultimate Edition because I'm like, I want the PS5 enhancements. They didn't do a very easy way of taking your base game and upgrading it on any console. Basically said, oh, we're going to give you the uh, Ultimate Edition. That's how you play next gen. Um, but your saves don't transfer Oops. yeah and i'm not playing replaying a 25 ridiculously hard game again so what i did was i just decided to play the ps4 version which came with the dlc and just play it but also on the ps5 so essentially it's playing with stronger hardware doesn't have the issues that the base game did on the old hardware and now i'm playing the dlc i'm playing the foundation in the uh it's it's a lot of fun really good basically it kicks off right where you ended and they are adding in uh new mechanics that weren't in the base game and i'm really enjoying it so if you really liked control this is well worth coming back and that's what i'm going to have it but this game reminded me how difficult this game is and what they did is they added gated difficulty settings and gated only in the fact that they make sure you really want to do this so they're like are you sure control's meant to be a difficult game and i'm like oh i'm sure but they do it in a great way because it's not all or nothing it's like increase ammo uh efficiency by 10 percent, damage by 10 percent. so it's an increment so you can kind of feel like rather than hit your head you know, on your PC or your Xbox controller or throw it at the, the TV. It's just saying, I need a little help to get through this because I really enjoy the game, but I still want to challenge, but I don't want to be baby mode. So mm-hmm. I want more games to do that. Just give me a little bit of help. I'm sorry, did you just diss story mode by calling it baby mode? He did. No, I'm not because I have played baby mode because I played, that's how I played Celeste. I played Celeste with all of the additions because I'm like, I don't enjoy the actual gameplay because I'm not that good at it. So I don't want to be frustrated, but I've heard so many good things about the story. I just want the story. So I'm not really dissident. Cause like I, I always play story mode, like hundred percent always easy mode, story mode. That's just me. Cause I don't want to die. Mm-hmm. Um, it frustrates me. But what's funny is I played Celeste a couple of times for when we were still stadia source. Um, and I get like, I mean, obviously I was terrible at it, but I didn't realize that I was supposed to be upset that I was terrible at it because <laughs> no. we were like, sure, this game is so hard and I'm just falling. I'm like, oops, oops, dang it. Well, fell again, <laughs> but I'm like, I don't care that I died because I thought that's how platformers were supposed to be. But mm-hmm. apparently everybody else gets mad. Yeah, I oh, yeah. <laughs> I was the same. And I, I just talked about... Um, was it Alex Kidd in Miracle World and how uh, mm-hmm. frustrating that game was until I started thinking about it like Meat Boy or Celeste. And I didn't turn any of the easy mode stuff on Celeste during my playthrough. I beat that game 100% without turning anything on, not because I, I was above that at all, but because I didn't realize until like the very end that that was even an option. I just picked up that game and was just like, I'm in <laughs> love with every minute of this. Let's just keep going. And I finally paused it for a second. I was like, wait a second. I can dial things down. Oh my goodness. But then I like got into the top of the mountain and I was just like, well, there's no quit now. Guess, uh, but it, 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 the same thing. It was like, I wasn't frustrated with it. It was just the game, but yeah, I, it's, well, because yeah. it was nice because you die, but you don't restart the whole game. Whereas, like mm-hmm. with other things where you die, it sends you back like fifteen minutes. This just sent you back to the beginning of that screen. Mm-hmm. So it's like, yep, died again. 
that like oh my gosh i should probably go find the stupid video because like i probably said dang it like 500 times in Oopsie. one hour span <laughs> yeah, blood roots is just like that blood roots they they minimize the pain and they get you right back into it mm. whereas yeah. a game like control yeah. where you die and you have to go through so much to get back yeah. to where you died at. And it's like, I'm not really enjoying the fact that I have to repeat what I was beating already. I want to be able to practice at the spot that was difficult. And when they, or, or and then you've eliminated half your health potions and things like that. That's where I struggle with like, I, I, I really want save anywhere to be a thing now versus mm-hmm. checkpoints that just are not intuitive and they don't make any sense. But mm-hmm. control is one of those games where, nope you got to go all the way back here and and it it just really eliminates the fun so i was perfectly happy in in the load times unfortunately the ssd is not optimized even though it's on better hardware it's just not optimized the 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 newer version is Mm -hmm. so the load times are faster but they're not fast fast so um but yeah i think it's really good and i'm glad that they gave me that ability because it's making the game has a great story but I also enjoy the combat and I still want to challenge. So it's, it's that fine line and I want more opportunities for people to enjoy games at the level they want to play at. So <laughs> I will say another thing that's frustrating about like dying in a game that sends you back, like to your last save is when you have to listen to the same dialogue Ooh. over and over or a cutscene again. again. So like what drives me nuts the most was, um, so my husband played through, uh, the last of us, the first game, and we were both like, this could be a really good game. And the idea, the premise behind like what happened with, with the zombies, like how it was actually like a fungus infection, like that was really cool. And they started off the story with a really interesting hook of, I don't know if this is considered a spoiler, but Joel's daughter dies. And it's kind of sort of his fault. <laughs> but also not really, but kind of sort of is. Uh, and so we were like, oh my gosh, this is heartbreaking. And we were like so invested in the story. And then it was filled with like cuss words from that point on. And every time he died, we'd have to re-listen to the dialogue of people swearing up a storm. We're like, we're done with this game. Hmm. (laughs) So he finished it. We haven't even touched Last of Us 2 because like I read through the story of it and it just looks awful. Like, I don't understand why anybody would want to play this game. Oh, the story is so good. No, it ends in the worst possible way. You can't read the story with the context. I read the whole story. It doesn't matter. It's like, I I, I will say this, reading a story in a video game without actually seeing the video game happen and the journey there, it's it's like it's like listening to a movie without the, with what you can see on the screen. Okay, so, but Ellie... The issue that I have with these kinds of games is that you don't actually control the story. Like, you can't actually make the character make a good decision. She Mm. makes the stupidest, dumbest decision ever. And you can't tell her not to do that. Just like you can't tell people what to do. Because it's like, you can't tell people what to do. People make dumb decisions. And it's like, it's like even in movies, like, people make the dumb decisions. Like, why would you do that? And it's like, because it's still a narrative and you can't have choices with the impact. That, that's like very few games like do that. Horror games is because it's not, you yeah. don't really control the narrative. Because if it was a horror game, I'd, I'd walk the other way. I wouldn't go into that house. <laughs> like, <laughs> Absolutely. I'm sorry, you're, yeah. you're screaming in there and there's it's the force narrative. Away. Yeah. Yeah. But, like, but I would say, anyway, yeah. I, so. Yeah. I, I totally get it. But I would say <laughs> reading the story. Like I would say, read the Breath of the Wild story. You'd be like, that's dumb. I'm not playing that game. And it's all in the context of what happens. Like, you don't want to read a movie script without actually seeing it happen on screen. But the Breath of the Wild game isn't about the story. Last of Us 2 is supposed to be about the story. So that's comparing apples and oranges. Correct. But it's like, read The Walking Dead story. And it's like, you can't because it's branching paths. And it's like, oh my God, where's it going? And it's like, yeah. Games are meant to be played. And and the story is, it's really good. The story is great. And people said, I read read the story. I didn't like it. And then they actually played the game. They're like, I've completely changed. Like, killing people who are pregnant and throwing entrails everywhere and like beheading people. And it's the same reason I don't watch game of Thrones. I don't sure. that. I totally get that. Yeah. <laughs> but anywho, I totally, going I back totally to get the that. Point of the whole thing. I yeah. like saves constantly. <laughs> I am like auto save every five minutes mm. and I will probably save every one minute as well on my own. <laughs> so That's the benefit. Yeah. That's one of the benefits of PC and we'll actually talk about that. 
in the back half. Yes. Um, so that is it, what we've been playing. So yeah, check out all these games we've been playing. Folks, the, the, all these developers have done an awesome job and they are making games we love. Uh, so very quickly as we move to the news, we just wanted to touch on this uh, story that's very big right now. Mm-hmm. It's, con- it's, it's not kind of even controversial. It is really just a... a be good story yeah. because we want the companies that that make the games we love to pe- treat people with compassion, mm-hmm. equality, and not allow people that are victimizing and treating people horribly to allow to be in positions of power. I, and I don't know what else to say about this. Activision Blizzard has had a lawsuit brought to them by the state of California after two years of review. Um, as of right now, um, Activision has put out a statement that they essentially vehemently uh, deny these claims. And uh, essentially, we've also had uh, personnel who wait, work for the studio, a thousand signatures essentially saying that they want action and disapprove of the actions of their employer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I have thoughts on this is one um obviously something is going on um obviously something has been going on um but two the investigative company needed to do this in a better way um because atv has said they were supposed to be coming into this in good faith as every investigation should be you come into it unbiased Mm. And so ATV has said that the investigative company came into this without basically saying you can't change our mind, um, which is a poor way of doing investigations. Because if you do an investigation the right way, then there's nothing that the company you're investigating can say against you. Mm -hmm. They will have no fodder to use against you. And this is millions of cases, well, not millions, but this is hundreds of cases of he said, she said, they said, we said of every degree. Um, I am by no means diminishing that something did happen. And to those of you who something did happen to you, I am so sorry. That is terrible. And nobody should go through this. Everybody should be tweet should be treated as a human being and not as an object. Um, however, the story is still unfolding, so I'm not going to be passing any judgment on it at this point. Um, I just sincerely hope that whatever the truth is does come to light. Mm-hmm. And also, HR, do your freaking job. Don't stand up for the big guy. You stand up for the small guy. That is literally the purpose of an HR position. Mm-hmm. If you are concerned that you're going to lose your job because you are reporting the truth. That's what you signed up for. Mm-hmm. Actually, sorry. I would say the position of HR is actually to keep the company out of trouble. It's actually not to protect employees. It's to protect the company from lawsuits. And unfortunately, that's the truth. They often approach positions based on the company's position, not in the employee's best interest. And that is a problem HR companies Every company, HR, uh, they they have they they struggle with that because it's the the fine balance, and a lot of HR uh, leaders, unfortunately, are tied into the leaders and not necessarily able to give them the tools to act out against the leaders, and that's a problem. It's it's just a problem of HR in general. They don't have the yeah. tools to in, enact those things if it's not in the company's best interest. Unfortunately, and I can understand that too, but it's always been my understanding that the HR representative, whoever I go talk to, to tell somebody that something is going wrong where I am working should pursue that. Especially if I approach them with evidence, Mm -hmm. not to just say, don't take it personally or something stupid like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Correct. And like, I've even had this direct experience and it wasn't for anything like terrible, like some of these people have reported, but it was enough that I was extremely uncomfortable with my position in the workforce. And so when I talked to them, they said, well, don't take it personally. <laughs> I was like, excuse me, this has nothing to do about personal stuff. But anyway, that's a whole side story. Absolutely. Activision Blizzard. I think this company, like I even did like a whole white, like I studied them for one of my college classes. Um, so I feel like I, I, I know a decent amount about them. 
And it's just it's a shock that one of these companies that is the biggest company could have so much of this going on. No matter what place you go, men and women will be treated as an object by the other sex in some way. But to be at this degree and to not have anything been said for for the last two years while this is happening is kind of odd. So I'm just waiting to see where this turns up in about six months. Yeah. Um, and I'm just, I'm just glad I'm not there. Mm-hmm. I'd, I'd recommend you guys check out a video uh, from a BlizzCon where a woman asks, uh, I don't know if you guys have seen oh, the video. It's terrible. It, it's terrible. And it just represents, unfortunately, a part of the culture that was part of Blizzard mm-hmm. at the time that was basically a lot of women to ask a question and basically be ridiculed. And this was a fan. Yeah. And I felt so bad. And this is by the creators of that game. These were the leaders of that company. And they essentially allowed, unfortunately that, that puts the thing out saying, well, if they said that in front of people in an audience, That's the thing is like, this is like, it, it's where there's smoke, there's fire, event. unfortunately. And, and she yeah. asked, it was like a pretty decent question. Like she wasn't being ridiculous about anything. It was like, you know, is there any way you can make some characters like female characters that don't look like they came out of a fashion model? Or I think she named Victoria's v- Secret Victoria's model. Secret yeah. catalog. And it, they they basically joked of like, oh, well, what catalog should we take these women out of? Or what and even mentioned or something, something and sexy like, or whatever. And I'm like, like oh. this. Yeah, it, it was like everything. It was the most frat boy kind of like bullshit humor or whatever you want to call it that it was just like listening to that. I was just like, wow. And it, like you said, Todd, a hundred percent of just like, if this is what they're saying in front of a massive audience and the woman's face said it all when they finished, it was just like, Oh, like click on subscribe right now. See you guys. Thanks for a non-answer. And basically just saying like, no, nah, no, nah, these women are objects. Like we're going to take the next ones at a playboy instead of Victoria's secret. Cool beans. Oh, thanks. Geez. Um, like that was their dismissive answer to it. And it was just like, you guys suck so hard. And this is like you said, Todd, this is your public answer. Female gamers is like, I, I have the saying, you know, gamers are gamers, no matter who you are, where you're from or what you play. But female gamers of that group have been on the rise. Like we love video games too and we can have serious questions too and that's always kind of bugged me too when it comes to like the way that women are represented in video games there there is a there's a joke that it was like sweet armor for the men bikinis for the women Mm -hmm. (laughs) it's like but i want that chest piece because that looks really cool Mm -hmm. and if you go through like shield maidens of history were fully decked out in armor. Mm-hmm. They weren't just skimpy things because they were warriors too. And so you had to protect the stomach and the legs and all of that stuff. Yeah. And it's never like, I don't mind form fitted armor because yes, accentuate the fact that you are a woman. There's nothing to hide there, but skimpy armor makes zero sense. <laughs> in like yeah. Every regard. And in a game that gives anyway. you so much choice, for yeah. other parts of characterization, especially if it gives you so much choice for male characters that, where you can, if you want to, run around as a super buff He-Man with a loincloth of protection on. Cool. <laughs> yeah. But if you also want to look like a walking tank then with of, of armor, then you can do that too. But the walking tank option doesn't exist for females. Instead, you get like, you know, your super tank armor equivalent like if there was a slider between like that you could just pick male or female and you had the exact same armor set on like the male version would be like massive tank armor and the girl would be like like a string bikini that's shimmery silver and it's like that's not the same (laughs) damn armor set like come on (laughs) no it's not (laughs) like and but that was the kind of answer that these guys gave and it's like the kind of thing that's reflected in the culture in the game and it's like Okay, that kind of answer plus a thousand employees. Like, I'm curious the balance of male to female in those signatures. Yeah, yeah. I mean, well, the the company is eighty percent male, twenty percent female is what they said the the makeup of the company was. Yeah. Uh, so it, it largely depending on where it's at, and actually, you know, this is Activision Blizzard, mm-hmm. Activision. 
essentially formed or acquired. I can't remember what the, the fix was. And the people that literally form Blizzard are really no longer with the company to a large extent. And they've had some change in leadership. So we don't know if this is a, a, a fall, a, a, a holdover of old, um, you know, mm-hmm. I, I, company, company culture as a way, because companies have a culture regardless of what it is yeah. and where it lies and things like that. So, um, I mean, it, and obviously this is a big issue, so we are not going to solve it today. Um, but I guess it would be, uh, depending on where you stand and where you want this to be and based on what Activision Blizzard has said, and now what a lot of these employees are saying, the only way a, a company will listen is by how you uh, financially support them. Mm-hmm. So if you do not approve this, um, do not go then and play the latest Diablo. Um, those things you're just basically saying, yeah, I'm saying one thing, but I'm doing the other. So if you, but if you do support the company, you're saying there's more to be done, you know, maybe wait until more happens before you buy the game. But you know, that, we're not telling what do you do, but it just, this is the reality of it. Mm-hmm. Company's conscience is guided by its wallet, not necessarily by, uh, complaints. In, yeah. in my little Twitter sphere, and I know I have a pretty small and curated audience of people who usually tend to kind of agree with my mindset. Uh, (laughs) But I've seen a lot of people so far already being like, canceled my pre-order for Diablo, canceled my WoW subscription, did, you know, like not buying the next Call of Duty, not doing this, not doing that. And like, I've been a passive Call of Duty fan for years anyway. Um, And, you know, I'll I'll be skipping the next one at least until this is like, like you said, Carly, like I'd like to see more come of this, like, we're, we're ve- in, in very early stages. The company saying one thing, employees are saying that there's such an overwhelming amount of employees that there's got to be something, mm-hmm. whether or not it's, it's getting a tiny bit like expounded or like this is a hundred percent legit. Uh, it's, it remains to be seen, but like for me, I'm, <laughs> I'm erring on the side of the employees to believe them a hundred percent because I like to believe people rather than a company that's just trying to make money and continue to make money. Mm -hmm. So to me, it's like, I will believe the employees until I'm a hundred percent proven wrong. And I will never believe Activision until they're 120% proven. Right. Like Mm -hmm. it's, (laughs) I don't know. That's just my mindset of like, there's such overwhelming evidence that like, no, like I'm, the, there's no some, victim some shaming going on. It's just ridiculous. Yeah. Terrible. Yeah. Like yes. I was reading over them and I started reading them out loud to my husband and I was like, I don't even want to be reading these because they make me feel uncomfortable. Yeah. Like I am blessed to be surrounded by men in the GSN who support me like wholly. There have been a couple of times when we've had guests on the show and like, our our guest isn't meaning this to be like rude not necessarily but it is a bit of like an innate reaction to the things that are said and because i am a woman and so it's just kind of like oh it's just a joke but like immediately Mm. it gets shut down like you do not do this to scarlet Mm. (laughs) like we won't have you back you don't say it you don't think it you just don't and so like i am blessed to be in this group of men who who care about me as an individual but there are millions of women out there who do not have that because they work for bigger companies Mm -hmm. because they actually have to like go into workplaces where they're essentially looked down on and and not just women but there are even men who have to go through this and i just feel so sorry for for no matter who you are what you consider yourself to be like if you ever have to go through this it's terrible Mm -hmm. um to any degree But, like, some of the stories that they've been saying of what has been going on are just sickening. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't think, like, I had a churning in my stomach. It just, and my heart was, like, clenched. It just, I couldn't, I couldn't, like, putting, I, and I, sorry, I'm getting emotional now. Um, I have a lot of empathy. And so when I read these things, like, I can almost put myself into their shoes and just the feeling of shame and depression and utter hopelessness that can come from being in situations like this. Cause mm-hmm. I have been in similar situations and it's just like, why would anybody ever want to do these kinds of things to somebody? The, and 
uh, yeah. I, I just the thing I, that <laughs> the thing that gets me is I I don't I don't know if this is the same. Maybe it's like a, a age group or something with me, but growing up in a small place very sports minded, all this kind of stuff in my community being like the geeky, small gamer guy (laughs) left me out of a lot of stuff and like kind of instantly got me dismissed. And like, I work at a car dealership. It's not a bad place to work, but I'm still not part of that boys club that kind of exists with like the sales team and stuff. Like I I run the Mm -hmm. digital marketing website, social media, all that kind of stuff for them. Mm -hmm. So I said, you know, like I post pictures of like the golf trip and I have no interest in going on the golf trip, but it's still kind of be like, fuck, I'd like an invite. But like, <laughs> you know, like it's like being, but like you'd think if a group of people was going to get what it's like to be dismissed because of who we are or what we like, it'd be the, like, the, I always just thought it was going to be gamers. You know, that's one thing that I loved about finding these online communities was like, oh shit, I'm accepted just by being a gamer. That's awesome. So to hear this, <laughs> it's like, <sighs> yeah, like just st- stand up for your fellow geeks. Like, I don't, I don't get it. It's just like we, and, and may, maybe it's like, we're the ones that were picked on. So now we have to pick on someone or something, but it's like the, the, the frat boy sports club thing is the exact thing that I wanted to, to run away from as a kid and gaming is where I went. And now to like hear that gaming is that same kind of thing. It's just, it just crushes me. Yeah. And uh, unfortunately, I think one of the problems with it is, is there's more people who want to be in the game industry than game positions. So a lot of people are probably saying, well, if I can just get through this yeah. or if I can just Got survive, the door. better days are ahead. Which is even worse. Absolutely. Oh, because you're you're just basically accepting to, to be treated horribly, mm-hmm. paid less, mm-hmm. and potentially not even ever going to get the opportunity because that that mentality will continue to keep people out of opportunities and only allow people that accept that behavior to be promoted. Mm-hmm. Like Mark, the people that want to go on that. I love sports. So I'm in that group versus you. And that, that mentality is much, I'm in an old company mm-hmm. and my company is the same way where the geek culture is, was rarely accepted. And, and all these things it's, it's coming around because the faces of the company are changing. Women are having more roles, which are great. And it's my company is like one of the top five companies for women, <laughs> but it takes a long time to get there, especially for startups and things like that in gaming where it's, it's, there's not always a culture that drives those good and they don't always have ethics like written down as their drive or their, their, their vision or their mission. And, and unfortunately Activision, you know, the leader is Bobby Kotick and Bobby Kotick is not known for his visionary skill, his treatment of people. It's for his ability to give shareholders their money, Mm -hmm. not necessarily making it a great place to work. Mm -hmm. Because Activision Blizzard has never been one of the best places to work since they emerged. So I guess we should leave it at that. Yep. But once again, there's lots out there. Read up on it. Let us know what you think because uh, we'd love to hear your guys' take on it. And so love your fellow person. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Be be good. Be nice to each yeah, other. Just you know? be nice. And watch out for others too. Yeah. If, you've, if, you're, if, if you can help people, do it. So on that note, we probably need to lighten the the mood a little bit. Uh, but we've been running long, actually, which is perfectly fine. But we, we just want to probably hit on these other stories very quickly. Um, so EA Play. So, guys, this is EA's event. It's about a month after uh, E3, which actually it's almost two months after E3, which is crazy. Um, anything stand out uh, from EA Play? I didn't really I – don't, I don't watch EA very much because I don't play – really any of their games we're, we're gonna go through this really quickly because once they said they weren't doing star wars i tuned out 
Yeah, no, much, or no right? Bioware. <laughs> or no Bioware. So it's like you really get no Star Wars, no Bioware, so <laughs> no Dragon Age. Completely, man. As soon as they yeah. they were like, yeah, we're not talking about Star Wars or anything, I was just like, see ya. Yep. So yeah, yeah, so I mean, <laughs> I can I can just tell you the highlights really quick. So uh, Battlefield 2042, if you're into it, it's a $70 multiplayer only game. The only thing they made that was cool is called Portal Mode, which essentially allows you to build like levels with, say, it's the 1942 Nazis versus like the 2010 uh, abilities or and basically military of 2010 uh, going into Afghanistan. So you can make all of these weird war scenarios, which I think is very interesting. But yeah, yeah, it's very cool. But if you're not into Battlefield, I don't think this is going to push anybody to Battlefield, especially at seventy dollars. Price multiplayer, man. In this day and age, it's just a tough sell. Yeah, we had uh, Grid Legends, which is that's the 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 racing studio they acquired. Um, I forget, I forgot the name of the studio, but they're making a, a Grid Legends game. But the funny part about that game is they're going full on like fast and furious movie mode in that game so it's going to have like a full like fmv like story oh with a racing game yeah yeah there's that yeah uh and then i'd say the big game that was you know just kind of announced but it was kind of spoiled was dead space is getting a makeover a remake i did see that yeah uh and it's and it's coming to next gen only though next gen only in pc so this one's going to be full from the ground up and they essentially found things from the initial bible of the game that they said they couldn't do back on old platforms so they're going to try to incorporate those things that were held back by technology and that's pretty cool neat all right yeah i love resident evil so this game is resident evil in space i'm all ready to go back in and <laughs> kill some uh, creatures with some engineering gear Cut off which is pretty limbs. cool that was the, the trailer thing right <gasps> oh my goodness yeah uh then we get into Netflix is going into gaming, mm. uh, yeah. basically, um, and it's going to be a mobile first uh, endeavor. Um, and at this point, uh, we don't know when this will actually show up and how they're going to achieve this. Mm-hmm. Um, but we've talked about the Netflix of games. Well, Netflix is Netflix. maybe trying to <laughs> recapture that name. Yeah. They'll be the Netflix of Netflix gaming. Uh, so I think what makes this interesting to me, and I want your opinions, of course, mm-hmm. is the fact that Netflix actually has properties. They have Stranger Things. They have The Witcher. Now they have a Castlevania animated series. So they, they are building their own category of IP, um, whereas comparative to like an Apple arcade, Apple doesn't have any IPs. Apple just has a bunch of games that they don't make. Um, so this is maybe a differentiator, and this will not be at a cost. This is tied into your no, Netflix subscription. For now, for now exactly. Uh, a lot of people are saying, though, this is really for audience retention mm-hmm. um, because they're kind of at, like, I don't know how they grow even bigger, but this is a way to keep people around if they give them something else, which HBO Max, Disney+, Plus, no other streaming service is offering something like this. Um, well, so it is something new. So... You say that, you know, things like HBO Max and Disney Plus aren't offering anything, but that's not necessarily true. Disney Plus is the offering. Oh, correct. Disney. Well, just Whereas, like Netflix. So, yeah. so going off of that, though, Netflix is literally just Netflix. They only do movies and they only do video or TV shows. If those things were to crash, Netflix would be done. If Disney Plus were to cra- crash, Disney would say, whatever, we don't care. Uh-huh. So Netflix has been needing for years mm-hmm. now something in addition to what they already do as not just another means of income, but also a backup in case TV and movies just for whatever dumb reason stopped being a popular thing. But what's nice about this is that they're doing the smart thing of doing mobile first, mobile games first, because it may not seem like it, but mobile mobile phone gaming or tablet gaming is actually one of the most profitable and most popular forms of gaming right now. Part of that is from cloud gaming, making it possible to play your games on your phone, wherever you go, but also mobile games themselves, things like candy crush or fruit ninja, you know, those hot ticket games that maybe you haven't played, but you've certainly heard of Uh are, super popular it's easy to get money from players uh because you know for a dollar you know for the next week you can play it a lot faster so people are like oh, okay what's a dollar but then that dollar becomes ten dollars a week because they're like what's ten dollars a week and so that's a really easy way of getting money to come in 
Um, sorry to bring this up, but <laughs> Activision's most popular stuff comes from their acquisition of King, who does Candy Crush. Uh -huh. So having Netflix first branch into mobile games is probably the smartest thing I've actually seen anybody do recently. Yeah, absolutely. Because there's such a force for mobile games. Like, heck, Mario Run for Pete's sake. <laughs> like, that is a super popular mobile game too. Mm -hmm. So kudos to them for finally listening to what Jason and I have been talking about for years now. Jason's my husband, by the way. Um, but hey, also kudos for doing the right thing of going into mobile games. Um, and But it is funny that it coincided with their report of the first slowdown in subscriptions in eight years. Mm -hmm. um, so they obviously saw it coming. We're like, okay, we have a plan though, guys. So shareholders, don't worry. It's okay. Yeah. Yeah, I, and I think the reason why they're going mobile first too is because they just don't have a local way to play on like everybody they else they has. They don't need to though either. They don't need yeah. to be the next console. We already have the PS5 and the Xbox and the PCs, and they don't need to be the next cloud platform. We already have Stadia, GFN, and you know various other things that I can't think of because those are the only two that I know. <laughs> oh, Luna. Sorry, Luna. Yeah. Um, and I mean, I, I mean, they, 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 they I mean, they make the hardware though, so they eventually yeah. could make something that connects to any Bluetooth controller. So PS4, there will dual, be a so yeah, Netflix deck. One oh of yeah. These days. <laughs> yeah. Just like just like Apple TV has, you know, that brings games to your TV. Mm -hmm. So I think they have a way to bring. I mean, ha a hardware right now where, uh, you know, which Disney Plus doesn't have hardware, so they rely on uh, Roku or, or sorry, Roku and other devices to do that. Smart Netflix TVs. doesn't either. Yeah, Roku, uh, Netflix is still require that, but most people get their Netflix via device, so they have a way to do that. If they but they still have to partner with somebody to do it. So it'll be interesting to see if they do this. That's and I think. Oh, that, that, oh, God, that, that's the interesting thing that for me anyway, is, is how this is going to be delivered. Because yeah. mm -hmm. if you look at every streaming platform so far, the big issue that they're running into is Apple and is, is trying to stream on an Apple device, which is in a billion friggin' hands across the globe. And when you look at the the hoops that people are having to run across, is the app, Apple Epic thing still going? Oh yeah, yep. Okay, it's yeah. not. Yeah, it's not decided yeah. yet. Okay. Uh, yeah. And and there's going to be further lawsuits out of that. Uh, I mean, we we just saw finally Xbox come out with a browser based uh, game streaming app, yeah. which is X Cloud. You know that, that that's that's uh, it's it's good, but not as good as a, a dedicated actual app would be that can take mm -hmm. advantage of all of the apps APIs and uh, and and tapping into the system more than a browser can. Even though Apple has increased browsers, I think to kind of curb a little bit of the lawsuits that are coming up, but. Will these be able to be played in the Netflix app, or will it change? You know, is is the addition of gaming into the current Netflix app the 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 issue there? Is that could not only could they not get away with that, but it could also completely erase Netflix from the App Store. Oh, which would be brutal for anyone who has netflix on their phone or ipad or you know de device mm -hmm. that way um so it's going to be interesting to see how they they go with this maybe it's uh, maybe it's browser based maybe it's separate uh right now i don't even know if you're allowed to remind people inside an app that there's a gaming thing that you can get like that's another problem with like this discovery discoverability that these gaming uh companies that are, are running into with apple of like use our in-app purchases you can't have game streaming and also the the one of the big issues is you can't tell people to go outside of the app because then that's yeah. outside of the app store, which doesn't get Apple money. So the whole thing is just such a mess right now that it's, I don't even know how they're going to do this and throwing another player into there with Stadia and Xbox and all of these other companies. It's like throwing another streaming game platform in. It's like, <laughs> is Apple going to, fight yet another company are they finally going to give in i just can't wait to see that 
like how this all shakes out. Like it's gonna, it's it might be time for Netflix to buy Roku, and maybe that's how they 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 get the hardware situation squared away. But until then, yeah, they're gonna be at the whim of being on other platforms they don't control. Well, well even even buying Roku though, I mean, yeah, that's built into my TV, but my my TV is not the default place that I go to do stuff. So, am I going to be dedicated enough to? Netflix gaming that I'm going to switch where I usually watch my Netflix on or where I play Netflix or like, is it, you know, like it's, it's, it's going to be weird. Like I usually watch Netflix either through my Xbox or through my Apple TV. And Mm. if Xbox is like, no, you're not having cloud gaming on our gaming device. Like middle fingers to you. No, thank you. Uh, but Mark, we're for the gamers. Anybody can play anywhere. <laughs> right. And, and maybe Microsoft will yeah. do that just to prove a point sure. in its lawsuit against yeah. Apple. Maybe. Uh, but it, it's just going to be so weird to be like, okay, well, you can play Netflix gaming here, but you can't play it here. You can play it in the app here. But on this device, it has to be browser. It's it's such a mess right now. Well, I, I can't wait to see how it actually ends up being played and it really won't matter if the games suck yeah. and that's the other thing <laughs> so, like, well, what a, it'll matter to them it, it'll be what queen queen's gambit chess match three maybe that or stranger things uh you know i don't know i don't even want to make yeah. it up you know uh 80s jam but yeah so we'll see it's going to be the games if the games are worth it they'll find a way maybe but if not then who knows but they do have properties that people love so mm-hmm. we'll go from there uh very quickly though netflix pokemon live action tv series i made fun of this because the guy they picked to make this is behind lucifer this ain't a guy that's making pg-13 stuff he's making hardcore devil shows <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's kind of explain funny yourself, thing. Nintendo. <laughs> well, Nintendo just thing, owns it's a not piece of Nintendo. yeah. No, they just it's, own a no, piece no, of the they, Pokemon Company. They own like f- almost thirty percent of the book. Po- they are a controlling member. That's why Pokemon Company Pokemon yeah, games will never be another platform. Nintendo so. kind of lets Pokemon do its own thing. Oh yeah, hence why Pokemon is the same game over and over, just a new name. Absolutely, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. But it's still funny though. It's like. Netflix, let's put it this way. As a firm, they would never let Pokemon do something that would damage the brand. Mm. Yeah. Detective Pikachu yeah. That's, that's was fantastic. Other... Yeah. And well, actually, yeah, it was fun. Yeah, it, was, it was pretty cute. I loved um, it, man. It was such a. Pikachu was so fluffy, too. Yeah. <laughs> I have no problems with the director being the same guy who did Lucifer. I've never watched Lucifer, but I know that it's extremely popular, which is a good thing. It's popular enough to have been canceled, <laughs> unfortunately. Well, so I mean, there's a lot of shows that are popular, but they still get canceled. It's got it's got about three million viewers. So and they are not uh, there's not a good crossover between Pokemon and Lucifer, unfortunately. Yeah, but I would no, say that. knowing how to run Frick. something can still help. Um, it, it can, yeah. To me, just because someone was a showrunner on a certain genre show doesn't mean that they're not running up with ideas for other things. Uh, great example. You can be a mega Pokemon fan. Exactly. And the, there's a Could couple be. of fantastic <laughs> yeah. examples. Like, would you give the guys that directed a few episodes of Community one of the biggest franchises of all time? Absolutely. Yep. Why would you do that? You're crazy. Except everything that the Russo brothers touched for Marvel was gold. Yeah. <laughs> uh, same thing. Okay. Would you trust um, a, a millionaire MMA fighter from Friends that had a bit part in like two episodes uh, and then directed Elf? Sure. Would you trust him to launch the MCU? Probably not. But like John Favreau is a friggin' genius and is like doing Star Wars stuff too. So. If you ask me like 20 years ago, like, hey, you know that jackass that just got his like ass beaten in in Friends and like directed Elf? Yeah, he's going to launch like an amazing Marvel Cinematic Universe. And then he's going to like do stuff with the Mandalorian and just bring a whole new generation of Star Wars love. 
um, I'd be like, you're crazy, but he did it. So for me, it's like, you know what? Like this guy could be a massive Pokemon fan. He could have other ideas. He could want to branch out with something completely different, or he could bring a cool dark twist to Pokemon. I'm excited about it either way. I mean, Detective Pikachu did kind of bring to light some of that darkness. We had underground sure. fighting rings in the back. Pit fire Pokemon. Stuff, yeah. Which was like, it's totally terrible, but it was like the coolest thing ever. And then they used like Loudred for the actual speakers. And it was like, I've never loved a Pokemon as much as I love Loudred right now. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Anywho, I'm excited because I think TV is actually the in in entertainment right now. Oh, yeah. Um, especially not just because theaters are shut down, but with a TV show, you get at least four hours of a story. If it's an eight episode, half hour episode season, that's four hours as opposed to like an hour and a half, two hour movie that you have to sit down at one time and mm -hmm. pay $27 for <laughs> this. But most shows are around 45 minutes an episode and they're usually around 10 or 11 episodes. That's a whole dang story. And you really get to actually flesh out the details, flesh out the characters. And so like, I'm excited to see what, kind of new detail we can get from the Pokeverse by doing a TV show that's not the um, canon anime. Mm. Because those are also typical. We've had the same 12-year-old Ash for 25 years now. <laughs> yeah. He always loses and Pikachu's always there. And for some reason, Pikachu can defeat legendaries, but the second he goes up against like a Bunnel Bee, he's like <laughs> dead. I don't understand. Uh, so anyway, um, I think you can tell which which uh, which series we've been watching from that uh, recently. Yeah. Um, so I'm excited to see what we can get from a live action because I think Detective Pikachu actually brought the attention of Pokemon to a larger audience because there's a lot of people in the older generation who are like, if it's cartoons, it's not for adults. Mm -hmm. Wrong. There are a lot of amazing animated stuff that are targeted towards adults and are phenomenal. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe doing a live action TV series will also kind of fulfill a need that I have as somebody who's had Pokemon my whole life, but it hasn't grown up with me. Um, I want something more grown up. Like I loved that about Detective Pikachu was that it was a bit more grown up. Yeah. There was some darkness going on there, but not like an adult darkness. It was a real life, realistic kind of darkness. And there was loss and there was mystery and there was love and there was fear. And I was just like, I love this. It's not even like the greatest movie I've ever seen, but it's Pokemon for me, not for my kids, for me. Mm -hmm. And so I'm hoping to see that when it comes to a live action TV series is that there, it'll still be fun for the kids. Cause you're like, Oh, it's Pikachu. Oh my gosh. Pikachu is real. You're like, I know, right? Isn't he cool? He's so fluffy. But then I'll be sitting there and I'm like, this is such a good story. Like, I want that. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sure you guys have probably watched Avatar The Last Airbender. Mm -hmm. Meant for kids. No, you haven't seen it? No. Mark. Sorry. Well, meant, Shame. For kids, meant for kids, but with a lot of mature themes. There's war. There's death. There's love. There's loss. Like, there's all of that kind of stuff, but it's hidden into you know, the kid cartoony stuff because it was, he was Nickelodeon. Yeah. It was Nickelodeon. It was yep. Nickelodeon. Yeah. So it was meant for the kids, but there's a lot of really grown up themes. And so I was like, I can watch this at 12 and at 27 and still love it. <laughs> like, anywho. So that's what I want from the TV series. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm a big poker nerd. I love it all. And I want to see it finally grow up. And if they still want to do the 12 year old Ash cartoon, do that, but do something for those who have been here for the whole 25 years mm. as well. That's what I need. Yeah, I mean, the whole point of a lot of these, when they go live action, is to bring in a different audience. I mean, just like Detective Pikachu did. And 
I mean, you can only do so much with, with the anime style they've adapted. It's very much like a Saturday morning cartoon. I watched it when it was on. I'm like, yeah, it's fine. It's it's fine. It's not great. The animation sometimes so-so. The storytelling is so-so. It's very cartoonish. Uh, you know, Team Rocket. They've been using like a lot of meme faces too, which. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and some people just don't like anime. They could like, it could be the best story in the world. It's anime. I do not. And this is a great way to uh, make it different and bring in life in a different way. And to your point, uh, Netflix puts money behind their series, so it could be good. Uh, the biggest thing that's surprising to me is Nintendo has a relationship with Universal Studios. Surprising that that is not where they're going with, you know, with or, or is it Universal? Yeah, it's Universal. Um, maybe they could get behind like the Peacocks. That, that's the, the streaming platform they have, but maybe that's just not universal enough. Maybe it's not enough in enough households, things like that. But this could be cool. Mm hmm. We'll see how it goes. And yeah, maybe this guy pitched the greatest idea in the world. And he's like, I'm done with Lucifer and I'm going to hang out with some Pokemons. So I'm not a huge fan of a lot of things that Netflix takes over because they tend to Netflix eyes it in a way that I don't care for. Um, one, one case being uh, we were watching Designated Survivor. Really great first couple seasons. Love the guy. Plus, like, I mean, Jack Bauer as president, how much better does it get? Um, but then it went on to Netflix, and in the first episode, there was, like, three F-bombs in the first ten minutes. And we're like, well, we're not watching this. Um, and they've done that with quite a few series that we watched. But what they've done good is revitalizing old things. She-Ra, Voltron. Um, they've got the, the He-Man thing right now, which is, like, a good little like nostalgia because it's still kind of dorky, but it's the updated animation and like kind of a better story. Um, and they've had a couple of their own gems that have actually worked out that are pure Netflix. And I think um, extinction was one of them with a uh, Ant-Man's friend um, was like the main actor. Uh, you know, the one who like tells stories like, yeah, she's super fine kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, so they've had a couple of couple of good ones there too, but I think they've where they've actually excelled when it comes to animated stuff is revitalizing things. And so I'm hoping that with it being Pokemon, this will be in that same vein of their success with their revitalizing as opposed to their we're gonna do our own thing. Because when they are taking over something that was from a while ago, especially She-Ra, like that actually worked out really good. Um so I, I'm I'm hoping that it'll be more towards that. Like, you know, we're taking something that already exists, so there are rules and there are boundaries that we can't break. Um, that people have loved for, you know, years now, as opposed to it being a new thing so we can do whatever we want. But if it's an older thing, they'll be like, okay, we actually have to kind of stick with stick with what the the audience wants as opposed to what we want. Hmm. <clears throat> Well, Nintendo typically does not partner, and Pokemon Company does typically not partner with people that are going to do wrong with their franchise. So I think. Well, and if they don't like it, knowing how Nintendo, it wouldn't go for it. Go, they'd be like, "Okay, we're we're just done." Yep. Yep. And I think absolutely, they, I think they actually just did that. There was like supposedly a, um, I think it was going to be a Zelda. It was going to be a Zelda series, and it got yeah. leaked, and they and said got, no. Yeah. And they're like, nope, which is just the it. silliest thing in the world. It's like we could yeah, give you the greatest thing in the world. Rules. Nope. <laughs> oh my Great. god, Nintendo! My goodness, they're still bur feeling burned by the Super Mario Brother movie. <laughs> Thirty-five <laughs> years later, oh my goodness, Bob Hoskins, bless his soul. And last story, really tying into our bonus round. So thanks for sticking us sticking around, folks, uh, for this because we got uh, this actually happened. You know, after we recorded the last of episode, course. Steam Deck has been announced. This is essentially, and I actually have a article on Secret Friends Unite. Uh, dot com about this kind of go into all the details about it. so I won't bore you with more details but this is essentially portable PC gaming on the go created by Steam starting at three ninety nine going all the way up to six forty nine um, uh, you know basically it's allowing you to um, get PC gaming on the go but it can also be docked to a TV with a simple USB hub so uh, and it basically is a, a seven inch screen with a eight hundred P resolution and man oh man this just was totally surprising and I, I just think this is cool it's it's releasing 
in December of 2020. Pre-orders are in. I actually got one in. Cool. I'm not sure if I will go with it, but um, I think it's a cool idea. But I have a pre-order in, so if anybody wants that and I choose not to get it, obviously I will share that. Um, but it's out. Um, so this essentially is a full on PC though. So this, you're not going to be restricted. You can put windows on this thing. You can put buy games from the Epic game store, steam put stadia on it, stadia, uh, <laughs> PC game, PC game pass. I mean, this is essentially the X boy or whatever you want to call it. Yeah. I mean, and then because it's steam, it has PlayStation games now on it. So essentially everything, but Nintendo is essentially on this thing for four hundred dollars so um and this maybe kind of lead into is pc gaming about to explode because essentially pc gaming the barrier has been price and it's been difficult you got to build a pc oh my god if i want to get a laptop it's twelve hundred dollars so no one's done this before i'm gonna say no <laughs> Because we already have cloud gaming established, which essentially does the same thing. The only thing that's different about the Steam Deck, not the Stream Deck, very different. Which came out the same Steam day, right? Deck by Valve, as I'm looking at my Stream Deck down here, um, <laughs> is that it's, um, it's just your phone with controllers attached. Pretty much every and I will, phone can do the same resolution, I, can get you to the same places, but you have to attach a controller to it with like the game sir or other things like that. But this is now just all built in one. I, I would disagree. I I because I, I think cloud gaming, I have failed on cloud gaming. I've not been satisfied with cloud gaming. I've even done it hardwired with uh cloud, with X Cloud, and and actually even um Stadia as well. And I've always been just destroyed by the experience. It's never been delivered. And it's really performance may vary, even with a hardwired. Mm -hmm. And this is where I vary with it. I would say this allows you to play when internet is less than uh, variable. Mm -hmm. And when your, your internet's only really good at your house, then I would say that in a hotel, in your car. So yeah. that's where I would say, and, and like the people said, cloud Xbox, um, I tried Destiny 2 on my laptop <laughs> streaming and I was getting essentially a non-playable experience and I'm 30 feet away from my router, but I'm still hardwired in. So to me, this gives uh, PC gaming at a cost that's never been available. It's giving a, a library of games that is the biggest library in all of gaming and it's independent of your internet connection. You can take it on a plane. You can take it in your hotel um, and I think that's a game changer that we've never seen before. And no one's ever been able to challenge Nintendo except for PlayStation. And they failed at it. So I can see that for, you know, some people, uh, specifically you guys, like, you know, if that's been your experience, it's been your experience and nothing's going to change that. But there's all, there's been just as equal, if not more, people who have had the perfect experience with things like Stadia or GFN or Luna. And you can use those in the hotel or on the airplane because on pretty much every airplane, there is now Wi-Fi. And at pretty much every hotel, the Wi-Fi has actually gotten a lot better. Um, like we were at uh, maybe Disneyland's uh, Disney World's a little bit of a side example because, I mean, they're Disney World. They should have excellent Wi-Fi. But we were there and the Wi-Fi was perfect. Um, so... I don't think it, this is going to make PC gaming explode. This could be the answer to those who can't make cloud gaming work for them for whatever reason. I have never had any issues with cloud gaming. Um, and I've been on and off using Stadia for over a year now. Um, I can't attest to Luna or GFN as I have not tried those out, but Stadia has worked perfectly for me. So for people like me who already have, you know, the Nintendo Switch... I'm happy with it. I already have the PS5. I'm happy with it. I already have the Series X. Happy with it. I already have Stadia. Happy with it. And I have a PC. I don't need this. For maybe people like you guys, where for some reason your Wi-Fi just hates you, <laughs> this is great. Mm -hmm. And, you know, honestly, $400 is pretty darn good considering this is essentially a phone with controllers. Most phones these days run for 1000 plus for the same capabilities. Yep. Mm. So for a lot of people, this is 
that is a really sweet spot for the pricing. I don't really think it's as big of a deal as as most people are making it out to be. Um, that could just be my own bias, but I think as a general consensus, it's cool. You know, good for Valve, good for you guys for for bringing this out. Like, and I'm saying that with 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 a you know genuine intent. Like, good good for them. Um, is it's hard. <laughs> It's hard to, to bring in a console of any kind because that's essentially what this is, is a console of a form because it is a physical device. Um, but I don't think it's going to be a as big of a deal. Um, its name is funny, though, that it's the Steam Deck. Yeah, it's a weird one. People are saying, St- I think Project Steam Boy is what it was called or something like that, <laughs> which is which is, which is spot on, right? <laughs> yeah, what they were going after. Yeah. So, so Mark, you're a you're an Apple guy. Mm-hmm. Um, you love your Nintendo Switch, yep. and you're an Xbox guy. So, what's 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 your take on this? Uh, it's possible to play games on an Apple. Uh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> well, yeah. I've tried. I have a I have a pro parallels or whatever. Yeah. Is that like your <laughs> option, like right? Possible. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I've, I've never I've never uh, used my Macs for gaming very much. Like I, I I played a little bit of WoW in the past, and and I used to play some stuff. Uh, you know, that's where I first played Full Throttle and a few other games. Uh, I've tried, like Todd said, streaming. Um, specifically xcloud mostly xcloud uh on my my ipad or my phone the last time i did it i want to look up these results really quickly um so i have a gigabit uh fiber uh, coming into my house that's uh, for for my internet the last time i tried xcloud streaming uh it was so terrible i was just trying to do sea of thieves just to run around for a minute just to see what it was like and it was so slow that it was like move the stick input would be like one, two, and then the person to move. Uh, so I oh, ducked geez. out of that game and ran a speed test. I was getting 463 download and 177 upload, which, which is probably like 80 times what they recommend. <laughs> they recommend yeah. 10. They recommend yeah. 10. Uh, yeah. So that that's, uh, much faster. Um, so I don't know what the hangup is with the, with that. Maybe, maybe I should, should give Stadia a little bit more of a look. Um, but for me, as like you said, an Xbox guy and a Nintendo guy who, yeah, and I play Apple arcade games now on my iPad. I just played uh, one I didn't talk about earlier was a uh, doodle God. Um, they just re-released that one. And it's like a super weird, stupid, fun game uh, that I got super hooked on and, and finished. <laughs> in like a day which is uh terrible but uh anyway it's um this this is kind of appealing to me and and it's uh not going to replace my switch not going to replace my xbox but pc gaming to me has always been a bit daunting of like the th- not that i don't think i could build my own pc or get into those kind of specs but it's just the, you know, do I pick this graphics card? Do I pick that graphics card? There's so much choice and there's so much stuff that it's that constantly being replaced and whatever. And that's my only hang up with this is, and is why I probably won't jump on the first generation of the, the Steam Deck is I'd like them to work out some kinks. I'd like them to make sure the hardware, they're already talking about uh, options to limit games to 30 FPS to extend the battery life. So I think I want to wait for them to work out these kinks, but like by gen two, kind of similar to the Oculus quest. I really, I was in best by the other day looking at the Oculus quest Two. like kind of wish I could get that right now. Uh, but I, I didn't. And I, yeah. So, but, um, this fall, if I had some extra money, and I was looking at like the Switch OLED, the Steam Deck, or a Quest 2. I'd probably be going with a Quest 2 just because it's that second generation hardware. The The Switch OLED's not really doing anything for me right now because I play a lot on my TV and I've never been unsatisfied with handheld on the right, like the OG Switch. Um, and the Steam Deck, I think it's really cool. I, I like that it's open. I don't think... I just don't think it's like quite there yet, but I, I love where they're going with it. And I think this is like a really 
good product for people like me who have always kind of looked at PC gaming and be like, yeah, that's kind of cool, but I just don't have the time, patience, energy, or whatever. Like, I like my Xbox. I like just turning it on and grabbing a controller and playing a game. I don't want to work with settings, drivers, all the PC BS that comes with like building a PC or having a gaming PC. And if this can solve some of those kind of problems, it's going to be great. But if this is basically just a little like a, like a little you know, like laptop, I guess, with controllers instead of a keyboard that folds out, like I don't know. It's it. I really want to see how this first generation performs. But it, I think if it solves some of those problems that are inherent with PC gaming, it's going to be at least a game changer for PC gaming. But I still don't know if it's enough to set the world on fire to move everyone away from console, switch, PC, mobile, streaming, all that kind of stuff. So uh, wait and see approach for me, I think. Where are you, what are you feeling, Todd? Yeah, and I, I feel like the reason why this is different than a PC, it's a console. It has one spec. This does not have 85 specs. Right. It doesn't have 85 it. that's, variations. Yeah, that's what I mean. This is an iPhone. This is an iPhone where it's you got one spec. It's just a, it's a PS5. This also allows you to game like you've never been able to game before because you can just dock this, put a, a keyboard and mouse, mm -hmm. put it on your TV. You can get PC gaming on your TV super easy. It's got Bluetooth. You can get multiple controllers, PC game on your on your TV. Um, it also opens up the world of mods for games that people like. Uh, my, you know, Sean's daughter wants to play Minecraft with mods. You can't do that on consoles, and this is mm -hmm. the easiest way to do it. It's a Steam library where sales are cheap, um, so you don't have to worry about that. So your library gets awesome. Steam has the biggest library in games. And like I said, now with um, the ability that I'm assuming Xbox will partner with uh, Valve on this, because Valve is one of the biggest gaming companies in the world. This isn't a fly by night. They will probably put a, a Game Pass, PC Game Pass app on this, so you can play those Xbox games natively. Mm -hmm. You can play Madden, Madden, you play Call of Duty. This is a game that, unless you're a Nintendo, every game under the sun is going to be on this. So essentially, if you're in a Switch player and you like handheld gaming, this opens the world to every other game at an affordable price, mm -hmm. easy to manage. And you can hook up a power, uh, you know, a power brick to it if you want to on a, on a plane and play uh, offline Destiny or not offline Destiny, Destiny's not offline, but uh, offline Halo. Just play the campaign Halo. Um, people have been wanting something like this, but they just haven't had an opportunity. And Valve has been improving not only their hardware with uh, the Valve Index, it's the best VR system out there. The controls are fantastic. So, um, and I just think this is something different. And PC gaming has been exclusive because of the price. This opens it up at $400 and the library you can get. To me, this is just, it's kind of crazy. It's awesome. And you can hook up a Bluetooth controller to this too and play Steam games if you don't like that setup. So I think this up opens up a flexibility we've never seen before on this platform. So like I'm saying, it's not going to set the world on fire for people who have other options, it, but it does say, if you like Switch, but you want to play Xbox and PlayStation games potentially and Steam library and indies early, this is the cheapest way that's ever been offered to do this. Um, and... And so where I think this has a lot of capabilities, and I'm a PC gamer, I have a PC, so it's not for me because I don't need it. Um, and I'm not a handheld gamer. I don't need it. Um, but I think this is an opportunity to have a gateway for PC gamers, mm -hmm. people to code and do all these other things that a PC can bring to the cable table. Google Docs, if you really want to do so, that's not there. So I, I just think this is a great option and an opportunity for people that maybe Nintendo isn't where they, they really want to game, but on the go. Nobody else can do this. Mm -hmm. um, and I and I and I have played Stadia. I played Resident Evil uh, Eight, and I got I I I I got it. I preloaded it. I was hardwired with Stadia, and it was a horrible experience. And I have a one gig internet connection, so I'm like, I, I just feel like if if I have the great connection hardwired, it's no Wi Fi, mm -hmm. and it was a bad experience at that point. I'm like, I just I can't recommend it to anybody because I can't recommend experience even the best conditions. So, and, and I've tried Luna, same experience there. Uh, X Cloud actually I had better experience on my LTE connection versus a Wi-Fi connection. Not sure why. Um, I, I just think online gaming, like streaming, it's coming. Mm -hmm. It's just, and I've heard actually GeForce Now is the best way to stream, but that requires a PC with a library you bought somewhere else. So you ultimately have to have that platform. So it's 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 coming and it's going to get better. But I think this is something that is the now that allows you to play games without the lag, dropping things. This is potentially a way, and then you can play Halo online with other people 
in a, in a handheld way, when you've got a good connection, you can do that. That's awesome. And people have been wanting to play Xbox games and PC, PS5 games elsewhere. So I just think this is really cool. And like I said, if this was just like the way they did the Steam box and it was open and everybody could do it, total fail. But the fact this is, and they and, and, and Valve is eating the cost on this. This is easily an $800 device. So it's they're not doing it on the cheap. Yeah. Well, so, every console sells for a loss because they know they're going to get the money from the games. But not at this level. I would say this is significantly different because this chipset and 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 because Valve isn't really making money they are making off money off of Steam sales eventually, but the fact that you can put on other game store apps on this that's insane. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah, because Nintendo's not putting other game store apps, Xbox or PS5 aren't allowing you to buy games elsewhere. So they're essentially saying this, you can eventually buy things not from us. And that's crazy. Yeah, but it is the end game is Steam Gate. Essentially Steam that you could buy this and never play a Steam game and absolutely not give them a cent. You just basically cost them Make it an emulator. Yeah, and and you're you're just yeah. you could play whatever Windows game store or something. <laughs> like you could you could yeah it's it's wild what they're it's mind-boggling what they're doing, but you know good on them that's i love that they're trying this it's uh it's going to be an interesting development to see where it goes over the next couple of years i think whoever thought google would make a platform whoever thought xbox would get out of uh you know doing what they did or microsoft would get over they're doing that this is how we get drive the industry it's people doing other things you didn't expect mm-hmm. so um yeah you know guys let us know what you think about this is this a pile of trash is it gonna crash and burn um we may never know because val may never tell us how well it sells we don't know i i hope they do and i hope that if this takes off we see some other companies doing the same kind of thing right like i i've talked yep. a, a number of times about how great Microsoft's industrial design team has been over the last few years. Surface tablets are amazing. Um, the the stuff that the Windows team has been doing. The, I love the new Xbox design. Like the especially like the Series S is so sleek and just uh, just amazingly just awesome. Um, even though I went with the Series X, uh, but like I'd love to see them come up with something similar to this see what their team does that that isn't you know the the steam deck looks it looks fine but it's not going to win like some industrial design competitions or anything like i'd love to see an actual hardware maker take a swing at something like this uh so absolutely i I hope this is a success because i i want to see some competition in this this space call it call it the x deck x deck i love that (laughs) Be careful yeah. how you say that. <laughs> I don't have enough of an accent for it to sound the other way. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah, yeah. I mean, in, X deck, but say it quickly. Yeah, and and absolutely, if this drives more innovation in the mobile space, I'm all for it because yeah. Nintendo needs needs competition to get better. Yeah. What was well, it? it's it's funny because we are spending more time at more time at home right now. I think partly because of COVID, but so many people are still on the go and so they don't have time to sit down in front of the TV, but also maybe somebody else is using the TV. Um, which is one of the reasons why I like the switch is that I can be on the TV playing something on Xbox or PS five. And my eight year old's like, I want to play my game. Okay. Well, you're going to have to play handheld. She's like, all right, whatever. She doesn't care. Mm -hmm. She She gets to do that. Um, so the options are, are good yeah they're fantastic yeah we're in a, we're in a gaming nirvana that i don't think my uh gamer kid in 1980 ever expected when i was playing tank on atari yeah you know, well, or 2600 because gaming is accepted now <laughs> oh absolutely yeah <laughs> so like, oh my goodness it's totally oh. totally i was totally in that generation of um as a kid it was weird and like I mean, we had the PS2 and like PlayStation, like people, people played games. Girls didn't play games. Um, to then in high school where girls were playing games, but it was still a guy's world to now where it's everybody's game. 
Mm-hmm. Which is a lot of Absolutely. fun. No matter how old yep. you are, too. I mean, you have the gaming grandma of Skyrim. Yeah. And then you have, like, three-year-olds beating Portal. Okay, maybe not three. <laughs> maybe, maybe, like, six-year-olds. But six-year-olds beating Portal. I had my butt handed to me by a six-year-old playing Portal. It was like, crap, I give up. Wild. <laughs> Wild. So, you know, it's it's anybody's thing at this point, And I love it. Like, it's not even, like, an inclusivity kind of thing which i mean everybody should be included but it's just because there is no reason for it not to be for everybody it just that's how it was and this is how it is now and i love it yes if you play bejeweled you are a gamer and we love you for i it. love bejeweled everybody <laughs> loves bejeweled i love bejeweled man the original candy crush yeah oh yeah before it was monetized to hell and i got stuck and i won't pay oh well (laughs) that is it for the show folks oh my goodness this has been a blast carly thank you so much for being on uh but before you leave tell people where they can find you because you are not just a gamer you're also a talented creator Whoa. Uh, so I got a lot of things going. Uh, you can find most of what I am and information about me on Twitter as Scarlet underscore stream. Um, and then I have a YouTube channel that I mean to do stuff with, but I never do, <laughs> which is just Scarlet stream. But mostly, uh, I, so I, I, like I said at the beginning, I, I do, um, unique gamer gear. Um, either it's wood creations for making, keeping your desk clean and organized or apparel. So you can show off your, your favorite nerdiness. Um, I also started a food blog, so that's kind of fun. Ooh. But as a thank you, uh, for being on here again, cause I love coming and talking with you, Todd and Mark, it was great to meet you. You too. Um, I really, you know, I hope to come back again cause I would love to. Uh, uh, absolutely. Um, but as a thank you, uh, to, those who are listening or those who are viewing um readygamer1.shop if you go to readygamer1.shop um check out uh the pokemon Togepi hoodie as inspired by pokemon go the first two people anywhere you are except for eu countries i'm sorry uh, European Union. I'm still working out how to figure out your tariff system. Mm. But anybody else, <laughs> first two people to enter the code Pokemon Life, P O K E M O N L I F E, no spaces, um, at checkout with a Pokemon Togepi hoodie in their cart, will get it for free. And that ends on Friday. This airs on Wednesday, and the and the codes end on Friday. So the first two people to use it, get it. Wow! All right. That is amazing. That's amazing. You guys to also be fighting for that. I'm 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 trying not to add that to my car right now. Oh my god! My <laughs> son my my son will be so excited about this. I'm but looking at that yes. Charmander hoodie, and it's like, oh man. <laughs> This is amazing. Thank you so much. That is That's more than generous. Serious. You are you, check out Scarlet's or sorry, Carly's stuff. It is fantastic. Okay, I go by Scarlet too. <laughs> I know it's so confusing. I mine is bland uh, Twitter handle, but you make such cool stuff. You. Uh, you do such great contact, you know, content on streaming, and you're you know you're doing a lot of cool stuff. So that's what we wanted to have you on. And uh, yeah, this is this is great. Um, definitely, uh, th- once again, thank you for being on. This has been yeah. a pleasure. Yeah, for sure. I'm, you know, super last minute, but I'm glad that I could be here. Um, Monday nights actually worked out really well. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. All right. Well, you know what? If you want to play with us, not just, you know, listen to us, um, I'm a Spartion 98 on Xbox and Switch and Spartion 1998 on PSN. Mark, where are, the, where are you at? Uh, Canardian on Xbox and I think the same thing on Switch, but if you follow the underscore Canardian on Twitter, you can find everything there and just link your Switch account and find me that way. So uh yeah, game on. And Carly, when you're getting mad about uh Mass Effect 2, where can people find you? <laughs> yeah. Um Xbox and PlayStation, I am C R Kelstrom, which uh for those of you who don't know how to spell in Scandinavian that's um, C R K J E L S T R O M. Just go to Scarlet underscore stream on Twitter. You'll find all my stuff there. And then Nintendo, which I didn't realize you can't change your username, is just C Kelstrom, no R. <laughs> 
So yeah. Uh Nintendo. Yeah, I keep debating on making another account, but I just I don't want Slightly to. Slightly better than friend codes. <laughs> yeah, That's true. Right. That's true. Uh, <laughs> and and Mark, how can people reach out to us in the interwebs? Well, you can find everything we do over at secretfriendsunite.com. Uh, so all the all the shows are posted there. All the videos are now posted there. We have our news feed of all the news stories and reviews and everything that we're doing. So give us a little uh, check out over there, I suppose. I was going to say give us a listen over there. It's it's late. I'm tired. Uh, you can follow us on Twitter at SeekerFriendsU, at the underscore Canardian, or at T Oxtra. I'll let you figure out who's who. Uh, and of course, you can subscribe and uh, rate us on different podcast services and on YouTube, if you prefer seeing our lovely faces while we talk about stuff. We also have shirts. We don't want to see the lovely faces. Exactly. We have shirts. We also have and I'm shirts. wearing one right uh, now. Todd's wearing one now. If you're watching the video version, I am not. I'm wearing one with a little link coming out of uh, an imaginary pocket. Uh, but you can uh, you can get our shirts and other great gear over at our T Public store. The link again is on SeekerFriendsUnite.com. So check us out there, buy some sweet, sweet merch. And, uh, but this week I would, I would suggest, uh, checking out Carly's merch because it's absolutely <laughs> go there first, <laughs> go there first. Cause, uh, one free hoodies two Pokemon hoodies, uh, and, and more, uh, I'm looking it right now, like I'm guys. super distracted cause I'm looking at the destiny <laughs> stuff right now. And I, I love that mask. GSN stuff, destiny um, stuff. I keep meaning to do more destiny stuff. I had more, it's, but it didn't work. It's good stuff. Right um, uh, oh, I might Horizon have to order Dawn, this. Ghost of Tsushima. Ghost, I, I was just looking at the, the ghost's mask. I might have to order that for my brother. Um, man, check out, okay. <laughs> so check good. out this stuff. I'm going to try to, you know what, Todd, wrap it up. Cause I'm getting real distracted by some cool merch here. <laughs> It's getting towards Ab- midnight when he unleashes the wallet. That's it. <laughs> Absolutely. He's drunk and tired. I'm not. That's this smart. This is a Pepsi. I'm not. I'm not. Oh, perfect. Tonight. Yeah, Absolutely. Perfect. Well, I will say this. You know what, folks? Uh, know what's cooler than a, 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 a girl gamer? A girl crafter. Very cool. Oh, Use your hands. Make cool stuff. Thanks. I love that. Perfect. So with that, Mark, Carly, it's been a pleasure. But as always, folks, remember, it's always better to game together.